Well, within the last week, there have been two major drills conducted by the military in U.S. cities with the cooperation and participation of the police. Now, this is something we should all be concerned about. The Founding Fathers are somebody that we look up to because they're the only revolutionary leaders that did not become tyrants themselves. They understood human nature and the depravity of human nature. And they not only defeated that in others, they resisted it in themselves, and they came up with safeguards and warnings for us as to how this would happen. And one of the things that they warned us about was a standing military as well as a central bank. A standing military will eventually and has throughout history become a tool of oppression. It has, been, it has happened in our country in the past where the military has been used to oppress people, and that's why we have the Capacity Comitatus Act. That was to counteract American suppression in the U.S. by the American military. Well, let's take a look at some of these recent drills. Uh, on January the 28th in Houston, we have a clip. Let's show that clip. Hey, helicopters and the sound of gunfire created a lot of concern this afternoon in one Houston neighborhood. This happened in southeast Houston around the old Carnegie Vanguard High School. When you see this, you think the worst. She told me, don't come home because it sounded like we're in a war zone. Guns shooting and helicopters flying around over the house. And an Army major who was out here wouldn't tell us exactly what kind of training they were doing. HPD was aware of what was going on, but the fire department apparently wasn't. Well, this is the military assault on a school. This was done with helicopters, with guns firing, with troops on the ground. The residents thought a war was breaking out. They didn't know what to think. They were warning family members not to come by. Now, the fire department didn't know about that. Ambulances were called and dispatched. The police knew about it, but neither the police nor the military warned any of the people, any of the citizens there in Houston. Now, that's not only, that's not only something that is not uh, competent, but it is also just contempt for the citizens. Let's take a look at this next clip here. This is uh, Miami, four days earlier, January the 24th, 2013. Still, if you've seen one of these drills, it really is like a scene out of one of those action movies, choppers stalking the sky of downtown Miami. Again, let me tell you what all of this is that we know of. It's a joint military training exercise involving local police, also military. As someone shot some video of some of these choppers, military-style choppers, flying over 395 in downtown. Well, you heard the guy, he says, hey, it's like a movie. I guess it's supposed to be fun. A lot of people didn't think it was fun. A lot of people were very frightened by that because, again, they don't bother to tell people. But, again, what's concerning about that is notice that he says that they're training with the police. Uh, it's something that we see happening over and over again. Here's another one in Minneapolis, August 28th, 2012. If you see military helicopters flying low over Minneapolis, do not be alarmed. They are training in an urban environment. The U.S. Special Operations Command will be conducting these exercises until the beginning of September. Yep, that's the view outside my window. That's right. You hear say, don't be alarmed. Everything is perfectly fine. It's just the American military preparing to attack U.S. cities. Of course, nothing the government uh, does, ever does is bizarre or to be questioned, just like we are never to question the TSA. And if we do, we're the ones who are bizarre. Here's another one. St. Louis, July 3rd, 2012. People who live and work in this neighborhood say they think the training here is a good idea. I think it's the same way when you go out to other countries, when you go out of town. They don't have police officers. They have troops. And I think it kind of scares a lot of people. Mike? Cut down on crime? Crime, yeah, cut down on a whole lot of crime because they don't know if they're military or they police. I think it's fantastic because this might slow down some of the crime rate. You know, the crime rate might go down. You know, that's what I think of. Well, now here, notice that the media takes a little bit different tact. It's not don't worry or uh, it's fun, it's like a movie. Here they have two people that say, well, we think it'd be great because it'd be a great way to scare people and get crime down. Well, no, actually, the standing military is a crime. And using the Army for police functions is a crime. It doesn't stop crime. It makes the government create the crime. No one who has a different view was presented in this article. And here's another one. Chicago, April 17, 2012. A pretty scary scene along the Chicago River turns out to be a military training exercise. Well, notice some of the things that they said. Although you're seeing the same things here as you did in other cities, 
people are talking about how reckless the behavior was. Uh, one of the videos that someone shot, he says, look at this, it's night, and these guys are zigzagging and weaving through skyscrapers at a very low altitude with no lights. Uh, something of reckless endangerment. But the thing that we're really concerned about, again, is the police and the military joining together. Take a look at this clip from uh, Los Angeles in January the 26th, 2012. Special military operation forces in conjunction with the LAPD conducting some military maneuvers that had many people wondering what is going on. When a Black Hawk helicopter and four OH-6s or Little Birds flew over the city. Duran says the military picks environments based on what they might be facing in the near future. If it's a mountainous terrain, then they go to the mountains. If it's a desert terrain, they use the desert. Also, what we saw here tonight uh, in downtown Los Angeles has been seen in Miami and in Boston. Now, do you notice what he said? He said, if it's a mountainous terrain, they go to the mountains. If it's desert, they go to the desert. If it's the coast, they go to the coast. Why are they going to American cities? Oh, do, you have that, do you have cities like that in Afghanistan or Iraq? Are they planning to invade Iran? But if they're planning to invade Iran, why are they coordinating with American police? Do they think that the Iranian police are going to coordinate with them on an attack and an invasion of Iran? No, but the U.S. If the U.S. military attacks American cities, they will get the cooperation of the police, or at least some of them. Now, all these things have happened within the last year. All of these reports we just showed you in all these cities, major military drills involving the police and the military working together to take over American cities, training, as the man just pointed out, for the scenario that they're expecting to execute. But uh, we, this has been going on for a long time. It's just accelerating. Let's take a look at this clip where we sent a team to Chicago. Uh, they saw there a National Guard training with local police and the Polish military. Now, in just a few seconds, you're going to see some Boy Scouts in rubber jumpsuits. That's right, they're pulling the Boy Scouts in on us. The Boy Scouts are being trained to be victims. And in just a few minutes, the Polish military is going to come in in full combat gear. That's right. Big Foreign exercise, troops will come probably, in. Probably, you know, 60 Boy Scouts down there with their Scout Masters and whoever else wanted to come along. Notice they have them lying face down in the anthrax powder. It's a very real life situation. <laughs> Notice that they're Everyone laying lie face down. down. In the anthrax powder. I mean, we're gonna move Hostages, you. you are expendable. Please put your face directly in the powder. All right. Yeah. All of a sudden, the the. Uh, Polish BOA is participating in this exercise, which they didn't mention at all before that. It was just they're here to observe, they're here to observe. Hey, it's BOA. Bureau of uh, Operational Anti-Terrorism is what I think it stands for. So I don't know, this was a hard one to swallow, watching, watching these guys train. Now in Police State 4, the rise of FEMA that we produced in 2010, we have guardsmen training to find weapons caches in Arcadia, Iowa. And we have an interview with a lieutenant colonel with the National Guard there. Held back now, it says in this article, going door to door asking if they can search homes looking for weapons. And they practice raiding the local gun shop. And this is for domestic operations. Lieutenant Colonel, I really appreciate you coming on on such short notice, sir. My pleasure. Thanks for the invitation. You bet. Uh, I saw this uh, article out of the Daily Times Herald in Carroll, Iowa. H have you seen that? I sure have. Uh, and uh, it's uh, it's it's telling us about an urban warfare drill to be held in several towns. Can, can you tell us about that? Sure. Uh, it's actually a, a planned training event uh, to provide uh, our soldiers with greater proficiency at what we call cordon and search. Uh, which is a mission that, um, um, just for a little background, we've deployed nearly 13,000 members of the Iowa National Guard in the Global War on Terror. And m the vast majority of those have been in Iraq and Afghanistan. And one of the missions that they perform in Iraq and Afghanistan on multiple occasions is cordon and search, where basically you are trying to, to get to an area 
uh, coordinate off to make sure everything's safe and then actually search for caches of weapons or other kinds of contraband which could harm um, American forces and other Like forces. Fallujah, what we saw in Correct. Fallujah. Mm-hmm. Correct. Exactly. So because of where we're located in Iowa, there are no active duty bases in Iowa. So we kind of have to create our own urban training environments. Uh, so the, the plan on this particular training event was to actually use a small town of about 450 people. Uh, the, the town has actually kind of adopted uh, the, the unit, which is called Company A, 1st Battalion, 168th Infantry. And uh, they, were, they were more than willing to participate in the exercise. Well, we showed you Boy Scouts being trained to be victims. They're also training them to be aggressors. In a uh, New York Times article in 2009, it says, Scouts to train to fight terrorists and more. Oh, what would that more be? And in this article, it says uh, their, their uh, person who is helping them is A.J. Lowenthal, a sheriff's deputy. He says, this is about being a true-blooded American guy and girl. Uh, now, they also had them uh, not only uh, uh, be aggressive with SWAT team raids, they also conducted a marijuana raid. And at one point, the guy says, uh, put him on his face and put a knee in his back. I guarantee he'll shut up. Well, that's the kind of training they're giving the Boy Scouts, not helping little ladies cross the street anymore. Just uh, put them on their face and put a knee in their back to make them shut up. Well, we've got another clip here from uh, Police State 2000. Now, in this one, Alex interviews a police chief from San Antonio. He had to kick out Delta Force for trying to bribe city officials in order to conduct uh, training exercises there. As far as we know, this is the first time that local uh, law enforcement, local police leadership uh, has actively stood up against uh, Bill Clinton's new military. What were your major reservations in asking the mayor to tell them that, that, that y'all didn't want them to train here and to cease training here? Well, a lot of things happened. First of all, the organization came into the city and never really approached the city as a whole. We has gotten together with the mayor and said, we need to speak to all these different departments uh, and request some assistance. Um, various groups and individuals came into the city and approached different people at different levels. The police department was contacted, the city manager's office was contacted about using city facilities, various business owners were contacted through the economic development department, uh, the fire department was contacted by different individuals, so there was never any coordinated uh, approach uh, to the city of San Antonio. Uh, when we found out that we had some reservations, but we were willing at least to listen, but then we started finding out that discussions were happening at other different levels and there was no, no communication, no coordination between that. Well then, when we said no, then some elected officials were contacted to bring pressure to bear. Uh, and then uh, offers were made to give money, cash money, to elected officials' charities if they could get us to change our minds. I mean, uh, you know, as one of my deputy chiefs said, in some circles that's called bribery. Well, we have a long history of the military and the police working together in this country, training for martial law. And Alex has pointed that out for a long time in his documentaries and on the air. What's alarming about this, however, is the increasing rate at which this is happening. As I said, we just had in the last week, we had two major cities where there were two major exercises. The one that happened just a couple of days ago in Houston, they are firing guns and attacking schools. Citizens are never notified. What is happening is we're seeing the militarization of the police and we're seeing the military used as police. That's a very frightening perspective. We've seen that before in our country's history. We've seen it in other countries. And in spite of what the people in St. Louis said that they put on the media, that is not something that reduces crime. What it does is it makes criminals out of both the military and the police. So we hope that there'll be uh, more people like that San Antonio police chief who have the integrity and the wisdom to stand against this. Well, that's it for tonight's news. We'll be back tomorrow night at 7 o'clock Central, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. If you are watching this on YouTube and would like to help support our operation, please consider purchasing a PrisonPlanet.tv membership. You can share that with uh, other friends and family. At least 10 people at a time can be watching simultaneously the news, so you can pass that out to even more than 10 people. I'm David Knight. See you tomorrow.
Pro Pure is introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. This is the Pro One by ProPure. You wanted it, you got it. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals all in one filter element. It cuts out the acid derivative of fluoride. It is the only one that does it. And out of the gates, we have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. This is a revolution against the tyrants. They love putting the toxic acid base of fluoride into your water. They love the fact that it's an adjuvant supercharging the trace Prozac in the water and the hormones and the other chemicals. By cutting out fluoride, you cut out the turbocharger in all the poison being artificially introduced into your body. This is what I use. It's a win-win. You get a high-quality product at the lowest price. You support the InfoWar. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139.